Episode 8, Jonathan. I also know why Richard wanted the signet ring, why the body of Max Wyman was found in your son's flat, and I know who Jonathan is. What? You know who Jonathan is? Temple, is this a joke? No, it's no joke, Ferguson. As a matter of fact, I've invited Jonathan here, to the flat, this morning. Uh, You're not serious. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what is it, Charlie? Uh, Mr. McIntosh to see you, sir. Ah, Come in, Macintosh, come in. I got your note this morning, Mr. Temple, so I thought... No, oh, delighted to see you, my dear fellow. Uh, don't forget the gin, Charlie. Very good, sir. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Temple. Good morning, Mr. Macintosh. Look, Temple, I don't want to be rude, but I think you owe us an explanation. An explanation? Yes, just before Macintosh arrived, you made a oh, startling mistake. Oh, I'm so state. sorry, Macintosh. Uh, do you know Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson? Why, no, I don't think we've met. Mr. I Temple, do. please, do you really know who murdered Richard? Uh, yes, Charlie? Mr. Elliot, sir. Ah, come in, Elliot. Good morning, Temple. Sorry I'm a little late. Why, hello, Ferguson. Good morning, Mrs. Ferguson. Good morning. I think you've met Mr. McIntosh. Uh, yes, of course. I, I was sorry to hear about your sister. And Look, Mr. Temple, I don't want to be rude, but... you've but... said that before, Mr. Ferguson. Is uh, anything the matter? Have we interrupted something, Mr. Temple? Just before you arrived, Temple made an extraordinary statement. My wife and I want an explanation. We must certainly do... What did you say, Mr. Temple? Yes. What was this shattering statement of yours? Tell them, Ferguson. He said he knew who murdered Richard. What? Not only that, but he said that he knew the identity of Jonathan and that he was actually coming here to this flat this morning. Did you say that? Is it true, Mr. Temple? Well, do sit down. Well, I think the best thing I can do is begin at the beginning. This isn't going to be very pleasant, Ferguson, so far as you and your wife are concerned. That's but... all right, Temple. Don't spare our feelings. You go ahead. Well, for a very long time now, there's been a setup in this country dealing in stolen cars. The setup is controlled by a person called Jonathan. Richard Ferguson worked for him. But one day, for reasons which we won't go into at the moment, Richard suddenly decided that he wanted to drop the whole business. He knew it was no good talking to Jonathan. You mean... He decided to eliminate Max Wyman and give Jonathan and everyone else the impression that he, Ferguson, had been murdered. Exactly. I see. He'd always hated Wyman because Wyman mistrusted him. He knew that there was a strong resemblance between Max Wyman and himself. People had frequently mistaken them for each other. Ferguson felt pretty sure that he'd get away with a murder, provided he disfigured Wyman, dressed him up in his clothes and faked the fingerprints. So he invited Wyman to his flat and, well, you know what happened. Yes. Unfortunately, however, young Ferguson... Forgot the signet ring. What do you mean, Macintosh, forgot the signet ring? Well, he forgot to put his ring on the dead man. Well, that's true, isn't it? No. I'm afraid it isn't. No? No. Ferguson hadn't got the ring. He'd given it to Mrs. Russell. Oh, but quite a lot of people thought the same as you, Macintosh, including Red Harris. Except that Red thought that Jonathan actually helped young Ferguson to murder Wyman and that they had both forgotten the ring. Yes, this is all very interesting, Temple, but you said you knew the identity of Jonathan. I do. As a matter of fact, he's here. Now. In this very room. Jonathan is? Yes. What? But he can't be here. Unless... Well, what are you looking at me like that for? Don't you know why, Macintosh? Temple, you surely don't think I'm Jonathan. Aren't you? Oh, you're mad. Completely mad. Paul, look out. Stand back. Stand back, everybody. Oh. Put that gun down, Macintosh. Do you hear me? Put it down. I warn you, Temple. One step more and by God... Paul, I'll... don't! That's better. Now stand over there, near Ferguson. Sorry to have been so long, Mr. Temple. I had a bit of a job finding... Drop that I... bottle. Hello, what's going on here? You heard what I said. Drop that bottle. Drop it, Charlie. Now... Stand over there next to Mrs. Temple. You heard me. Do as he tells you, Charlie. Go on, get moving. Okay. Now listen, I warn you, if anybody moves, if anybody tries any tricks, you've had it. Don't anyone move. He means it. Have you got the key to this door, Temple? It's in the lock on the outside. 
Open the door, Mrs. Temple. Open it, Steve. Now, go back into the room. You fool, Macintosh. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you? We'll see, Temple. We'll see. He's locked it, Mr. Temple. Temple, what are we going to do? Phone for the police. We'd better break the lock, Temple. Otherwise, he'll have a good start on us. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He won't have a start on anybody. What do you mean? Sir Graham's downstairs with Inspector Gerard in half Scotland Yard. If he gets as far as the hall, he'll be lucky. Paul, listen. Macintosh, give me that gun. Come along, Macintosh, Macintosh. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! I want you, I'll fire! Don't you fool! I'll fire! Can't we get out and, and see what's happened? Quiet, there's someone coming. Who's there? Oh, Sir Graham. Did you get him? What happened? What happened, Sir Graham? He's dead. Macintosh? Yes, he shot himself. Speak to Mr. Mark Elliott, please. Who's it calling? Mrs. Temple. Oh, one moment, please. Hello? Mrs. Temple on the line, sir. Oh, oh, thank you. Hello? Good morning, Mrs. Temple. Oh, good morning, Mr. Elliott. I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Not at all. I've been up for hours. I've been reading the papers. There doesn't appear to be anything about Macintosh. No, there doesn't. Well, I'm glad, for the Ferguson's sake. Mr. Elliott... I rather wanted to talk to you. Do you think we could meet sometime this afternoon? I know you're a frightfully busy man. Well, I have an appointment at five o'clock, but look, uh, let's say 3.30. Oh, 3.30 would do beautifully. Perhaps we could have tea together. Yes, I, I don't see why not. Oh, lovely. I'll see you at the Ritz in the hall about uh, 3.30. Yes, all right. It's very sweet of you. Not at all. Delighted. Oh, by the way, what is it you wanted to see me about? I'll tell you this afternoon, Mr. Elliot. Goodbye. Well done, Steve. Perfect. <laughs> Next week, Cleopatra. <laughs> what did he say? I'm having tea with him this afternoon. But don't ask me why. I'll brief you later, Steve. Don't worry. What do you mean, brief me? What's got into you this morning? You were up half the night, and yet you seem so... Yes? What is it, Charlie? Sir Graham Forbes is here, madam. Ah, oh, come in, Sir Graham. Come in. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Sir Graham. Well? I think you're going to be wrong, Temple. I don't think so. Well, it's beginning to look like it. Frankly, I'm worried. Um, did you telephone Mrs. Russell? I saw her. You saw her? When? Last night, after the Macintosh incident. Paul went back to Oxford, Sir Graham. He didn't get home till half past four this morning. Mm -hmm. What did she say? Well, I put my cards on the table and told her... Qu oh, excuse me. Hello? Mr. Temple? Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Russell. Uh, I did what you suggested. Well? He's made an appointment, five o'clock this afternoon. Good. Uh, did he say anything else? No, he was non-committal, but I think he was interested. Thank you, Mrs. Russell. You uh, don't really want me to keep that appointment, do you? No, no, we'll keep it for you. Thanks very much, Mrs. Russell. Uh, I'm going away for two or three weeks. If, if you want to get in touch with me... Oh, don't worry. If we want you, we'll find you. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Temple, and thanks for everything. Not at all. Goodbye. Well, he made an appointment to see her this afternoon at five o'clock. Elliot said he had an appointment at five, Paul. How do you know, Steve? She spoke to Elliot on the phone, Sir Graham. As a matter of fact, she's having tea with him this afternoon. Oh, is she? Now, listen, Steve. When you see Elliot this afternoon, this is what I want you to do. Of course, if you do stick to one colour, it's far more economical. I remember one year, I wore nothing but grey. Really? Mm. By the end of the season, I was positively dying for something gay and exotic. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure you were. Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like another cake, Mrs Temple? Oh, quite sure, thank you. Uh, Mrs Temple, what exactly is it you wanted to see me about? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. How stupid of me. <laughs> Do you know, I'd almost forgotten. My husband asked me to give you a message, Mr. Elliot. Oh? He couldn't come himself. He had an appointment at half past three and another at five o'clock, so it was quite... Oh, oh, you've got an appointment at five, haven't you? Yes, I have. Oh, I hope I'm not going to make you late for it. Oh, no, 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 no. It's uh, 
Only just four. Oh, good. Uh, Mrs. Temple, you still haven't told me. Told you what? What you wanted to see me about. Oh, but I did. Just now. My husband asked me to deliver a message. Yes, but what was the message? Oh, of course. He said, tell Mr. Elliot, the game's up. The game's up? Yes. What does he mean? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know. That's just the message I was asked to deliver. Did your husband say anything else? No. Except that he insisted that I had tea with you down here instead of up in your room. He what? Oh, that was only because he knew that there'd be a, a telephone in your room and he didn't want you to use it. Didn't want me to use it? Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm afraid I just don't understand. Well, you see, Paul thought that once you saw our friend, you, you might want to telephone someone and uh, well, that's the last thing he wanted you to do. Our friend? What are you talking about? Well, our friend over there, of course, in the corner. I, I don't see anyone. Oh, come. Look carefully, Mr Elliot. In the corner, near the pillar. Good Lord. It's Macintosh. Yes. It's Macintosh. Yes. But I, I, I thought he was dead. Whatever gave you that idea? But he shot himself. I heard the shot. We all heard the shot. He couldn't very well shoot himself with a blank cartridge, now, could he? You mean the whole thing was a put-up job? How much does your husband know, Mrs Temple? Quite a lot, I should imagine. Of course, he doesn't tell me everything. You know what husbands are. Now, you listen to me, Mrs. Temple. You let go of my arm. You tell me exactly what's behind all this. You let, tell me why you came here this me, afternoon sir. and why... Mr. Elliot. Yes, what do you want? I'm Inspector Gerard, sir, and this is Sergeant Bowman. Well? We've a warrant for your arrest, Mr. Elliot. My, my, my arrest? Yes, sir. It looks as if you'll be wearing grey this season, Mr. Elliot. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I believe you have a Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson staying here. Uh, yes, sir. Suite 103. Well, would you bring Mr. Ferguson, please, and say that Mrs. Russell has arrived? Uh, Mrs. Russell? Yes. But, uh... My name is Forbes of Scotland Yard. This is Paul Temple, Inspector Gerard, Sergeant Wilson. Oh, uh, Oh, I see. Uh, I think perhaps you'd better see Mr. Milson, the manager, sir, just Just in case. ring Mr. Ferguson and tell him that Mrs. Russell has arrived. That's all we want you to do. Very good, sir. Well? There doesn't appear to be a reply, sir. Keep ringing. I yes, sir. There's no reply, sir. I'm sorry. What is it, Desmond? Uh, these gentlemen are asking for Mr. Ferguson, sir. The Fergusons checked out about an hour ago. Checked out? Yes. Did they take their luggage? Yes, of course, sir. They're leaving on the six o'clock plane for New York. Okay, Helen? Yes. Now remember what I told you? I shall be all right. When we get on the plane. Sure. Uh, may I see your passports, please? Oh, certainly. Have you got much English money on you, Mr. Ferguson? No, only a shilling or two. Uh, Mrs. Ferguson? No, no, nothing. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, one moment, Mr. Ferguson, please. Yes, sir, what is it? Would you come this way, please, sir? The immigration officer would like to have a word with you. Oh, surely. I won't be a moment, Helen. All right, Robert. This way, please, sir. Thank you. Why, hello, Temple, Sir Graham. Thank you, officer. Thank you, sir. Well, this is a surprise. I certainly didn't expect to find you two at the airport. Well, if it comes to that, we didn't expect to find you here either. You cancelled your hotel reservations this morning. That's right, I did. But we thought you intended to stay over here for a couple of days. Well, so we did, but, uh, <laughs> say, you boys are pretty well informed. What happened, Ferguson? Uh, Helen suddenly changed her mind again and decided that she wanted to go home at once. You know what women are. Why did you change your mind? Was it because Mark Elliot phoned you? Well, why should he make me change my mind? My wife phoned Elliot this morning at my request and made an appointment to see him this afternoon. Well? It's my bet Elliot told you about that appointment, and you decided to play safe after all and return to the States. Play safe? Say, 
What is this? It was your original intention to see Mrs. Russell this afternoon at five o'clock. You meant to ask her to join your organization. What organization? Diana Nelson talked, Ferguson. In fact, she's still talking. Still talking? You're crazy. Dinah's dead. Oh, no, she's not. What? Elliot thought she was dead. The hospital told him so. But you can take it from me, she's very much alive. As much alive as Macintosh, in fact. Do, do you mean that Macintosh didn't commit suicide? I think we'd better let Elliot tell you about Macintosh. I understand he got quite a shock when he saw him this afternoon. We've arrested Elliot, and he'll talk, Ferguson. I shouldn't have any illusions on that score. Well, he can talk till he's blue in the face. But, but he, he was in this business just, just as much as me or anyone else. It was Elliot that handled the distribution side. He gave Richard his instructions. He told Red Harris what to do. And he made Clegley murder Mrs. Gulliver so that... We know all that, Ferguson. But you were the brains behind the setup. You started it. You made all the contacts. You were Jonathan. How, how long have you known, Temple? Some little time. But I just wasn't certain. Then, as Rudolph Charles died, he said something which confirmed my suspicions. I see. Temple, there are two things I want you to know. One, my wife wasn't mixed up in this business. Towards the end, she got suspicious and started making inquiries, but believe me, she wasn't mixed up in it. Go on. Secondly, I'm a gambler. I've been a gambler all my life, Temple. I know when I'm beaten. <clears throat> What is it, Ferguson? I... Is it your heart again? Yes. You'd better sit down. I... I'll be all right. It'll pass. It's just the suspense of waiting and wondering if... Temple, my wife's got some tablets of mine. They're in her handbag. Do you think you could get one for me? They usually do the trick. Yes, all right, Ferguson. There's um, a settee over there, Ferguson. I think you'd better lie down. No, I, I'm better sitting up. I... Oh, oh, gee, this is one of the worst attacks I, I've had for some time. Do you think I could have a drink of water? Yes, there's some water on the desk. I'll get it for you. Thanks. Here we are. Thanks. Is that better? Uh, oh. I think it's easing off a little. But, oh, gee. Uh, did you get the tablet, Temple? Yes. Here it is, Ferguson. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Feeling better? Well, in a few minutes. Did my wife say anything, Temple? No, she just gave me the tablet. Is she okay? Yeah, she's all right. Is the tablet having any effect? It will, Sir Graham. Don't worry. It will. What do you mean, Ferguson? I told you I was a gambler, didn't I? I told you I knew when to throw in my chips. Yes, well, I'm not a gambler. Here's the tablet your wife gave me. Huh? You took an aspirin. Timothy, I feel tired tonight. Yes, well, you'd better not feel too tired. You've both got some explaining to do. Hmm? What do you mean, explaining, Steve? Well, in the first place, I just don't understand why Macintosh pretended he was Jonathan. That was my brainwave, Steve. Since it worked, I take the credit for it. <laughs> Actually, the idea was to lull Ferguson into a feeling of complete security. I put the idea to Macintosh, and he agreed to help us. We did very much the same sort of thing over Dinah Nelson. You mean about the hospital? Yes. When Elliot telephoned them, he was told that Dinah had died. Later the same morning, Temple assured him that no one had actually spoken to Dinah. So he felt on pretty safe ground? Very safe ground. So much so, in fact, that he decided to stay on and form the nucleus of a new organisation with Elliot. Mm -hmm. I told Mrs Russell to phone Ferguson and suggest a meeting at the hotel and give him a pretty broad hint that she was hard up and might be prepared to join the new setup. 
Ferguson was rather worried about her. He knew she'd been very friendly with Richard, and he wasn't sure just how much she knew. Well, as you know, Sir Graham and I kept the appointment instead of Mrs Russell. But, of course, the Fergusons had already left for the airport. Yes, but, look, how did this business first start? Well, Ferguson was running the stolen car racket. Mm -hmm. And he employed a number of people, including Red Harris, Rudolph Charles, Mrs Gulliver, Richard Ferguson, and so on. His right-hand man was Mark Elliott. Mm -hmm. Now, several months ago, a man called Duma contacted Ferguson. Oh, he was the man running the car racket on the continent, um, A4D4. Uh -huh. That's right. And he thought he'd like to tie up with the Jonathan organisation. He probably wanted sterling or dollars. So he wrote Ferguson a friendly note and sent him a present. The present was the signet ring. Ah. Duma told Ferguson he was taking no chances and that when they did meet, Ferguson, or his appointed deputy, must wear the ring as a means of identification. I see. But things suddenly began to get very hot for Dumas, and the meeting was postponed. Ferguson then gave the ring to Richard without telling him how important it was. But Richard gave the ring to Mavis Russell. Well, that was rather silly of him. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when Ferguson arrived in England and discovered that his son had apparently been murdered and that the ring was missing, he felt sure that Elliot was double-crossing him. He thought that Elliot had murdered Richard and, and stolen the ring. Yes, but of course Richard had decided to get out of the car racket. He phoned his father and explained what had happened. Ferguson was furious and told him he must get the ring back and explained why. He was also worried in case someone had overheard that phone call from a man supposed to be dead. So to cover himself, he told me Richard had phoned him. And they made up the story about Richard wanting to meet him at the house in Lewisham. Knowing, of course, that he wasn't at the house and that Red Harris had been taken care of. Oh, yes, well, that was the night that Ferguson had the heart attack and we went in his place. Uh -huh. But, Paul, was Richard Ferguson blackmailing Elliot? No, of course he wasn't. Elliot invented that blackmailing story to explain his association with young Ferguson. Well, actually, Elliot convinced Jonathan that he'd nothing to do with the missing ring and promised that if Ferguson and his wife supported his blackmailing story... He'd do his best to get the ring back. In fact, he did get it back. He stole it from your husband the night you went to the encounter. Yes, but why did he give it us back the next morning? Because Duma had been arrested the night before. I see. I think. <laughs> oh, this is complicated. But I think I've got it. Well, not knowing that Duma was arrested, Richard still thought the ring was important and got in touch with Temple. Elliot followed young Ferguson out in his car and stopped him. There was an argument... And Ferguson was shot. By Elliot? Yes. After the murder, Elliot parked the car by the side of the road, dashed to the AA box and phoned Clegley. And Clegley was the man who murdered Mrs Gulliver? Yes. He told Clegley what had happened and asked him to take care of the body. He certainly did. He set the car on fire. Elliot was taking no chances. He'd made up his mind to eliminate anybody who was likely to talk. Mrs Gulliver... Mavis Russell. Oh, yes, the, the bomb in the car. Yes, that's right. And Dinah Nelson. It was Rudolph Charles who was given the job of disposing of Dinah, but fortunately she turned the tables on him. But, Paul, if she killed Rudolph Charles, Macintosh must have seen the body. He did. He did? When he returned with the aspirin, he found Dinah standing over Charles with a revolver in her hand. He disposed of the revolver and told Dinah to get out of Oxford as quickly as she could. She didn't, of course. She tried to commit suicide. But what about the postcard that she had from Jonathan? It was phony, Steve. Jonathan knew that we had one genuine card, the card sent to young Ferguson. The others were just meant to put us off the scent. Well, did Macintosh know that Rudolph Charles was a, a member of the Jonathan setup? No, he didn't. When we explained the position to him, he told us the truth about the Charles murder and agreed to cooperate with us. Hmm. Now, there's just one other point. Before hmm. Rudolph Charles died... He said, Ferguson is the ring. But what did he mean by that? What he tried to say was, Ferguson, meaning Robert Ferguson, Ferguson is the ring leader. The ring leader? Mm. Do you know, I never thought of that. No, and your dear husband only thought of it 24 hours after Rudolph Charles <laughs> said it. <laughs> yes, but I did think of it, Sir Graham. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah, well... That's the end of the Jonathan mystery. Yes, though. thank goodness, and I want to celebrate it. Steve, where's the bottle of champagne? Oh, 
Here we are. Oh, you're not going to open champagne at this time, I certainly am. It's precisely what I'm going to do. This is an occasion, darling. A festive occasion. <laughs> ah. Oh. Sir Graham, your glass. Oh. Oh, thank you, Temple. Steve? Come on, darling, come on. I'm coming. Now, I'm going to make a toast. You're going to do nothing of the sort. Hmm? I'm the oldest member of this trio, and if anyone's going to make a toast, I'm going to make it. To my very dear friends, Paul Temple and Steve. What's the matter, darling? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> my Timothy women are extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> That was the final episode of Paul Temple and the Jonathan Mystery. The part of Paul Temple was played by Peter Cook and Steve by Marjorie Westbury. Robert Ferguson by John Glenn, Helen Ferguson by Griselda Harvey, Reggie McIntosh by Simon Lack, Mavis Russell by Isabel Rennie and Mark Elliott by William Fox. The serial was written by Francis Durbridge and produced for the BBC by Martin C. Webster.